I'll give you a nice uh, example. There was a butcher. Now this person is born in such circumstance, such a family, and his business is to sell meat. And he would sit in his shop morning till night. He had a weighing scale. And uh, one fine day, as he is walking towards his shop, he finds a black stone on the street. He picks it up, he's attracted, and he starts using it as a weighing scale. And this stone was magical. If he wanted to sell 2 kg, the stone would become 2 kg. He had to place, he had that weighing scale, so one side he had to place 2 kg, so the stone would weigh 2 kg. If he had to weigh 4 kg, the stone would become 4 kg. And while doing all this, he would continuously sing the names of Krishna. He was singing, glorifying him, remembering him. So one fine day, one Brahmana, he sees and he is horrified. This black stone happened to be a Shaligram Shila, Lord Vishnu's form. So he chastised him and this person felt so embarrassed. He gave it to the Brahmana and said, you go and take him. Because I'm sorry I've been keeping him here in such a dirty place. Now the Brahmana starts worshipping him with his tantras, mudras, mantra, all the process. And one fine day the Lord appears in his ring, I am not happy here with you. I was more happy in his shop. He said, why is such a dirty place? He said, no. But while he was doing that, he was singing my praises constantly, remembering me. So he had to take him back. So now this person was born in that condition because of his own past karma. He couldn't change that. That's his destiny. But from there he tried to connect to it. And the Lord was happy. Now he was not killing animals. Don't take it as a as an endorsement that ah, I can go on doing whatever I like and I keep chanting. No, he was not killing, but this is the circumstances he was born in because of his past karma. But he utilized that to remember him, connect with him. So Krishna says, Yes, Arjuna, you fight. At the same time, remember me. He's not saying don't do your duty as a Kshatriya. Simultaneously, we have to remember him. And to do that, while we are working in this world to remember him, we have to certainly dedicate some time, some amount of time in a day, where we are exclusively giving attention to him, chanting his names, remembering or studying the scripture, worshipping. That way, our whole consciousness, that consciousness stays with us, with us throughout the day. And we will be able to remember him. So the key is, the scriptures explain there are only two rules, which are the kings of all, all the other rules and regulations mentioned in the scriptures. And if we are following these two, then we don't need to follow any other rule. And that is, always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. It's the same rule, basically. And if you are able to do that, everything else is automatically followed, because the goal is this. So the goal is remembrance of Krishna. It's not, uh, goal is not renunciation, giving up things and giving up the world. And in Kali Yuga, it's very difficult to give up. It's not recommended also. There have been so many kings in the past who were great rulers, managers, doing so many things, handling countless souls. At the same time, they were great devotees. They were using the facilities they had to inspire others in God's service. So that's the greatest, especially when we are having some position in society, we can do the greatest service by being a good example. Because a true leader, a true influencer, which everybody wants to become nowadays, is uh, somebody that people who follow you, you make sure that they don't, they don't just advance materially, but spiritually as well. Then you are a true leader. So especially when you have a position in society, you're educated, you can do so much service by inspiring people on this path, by your own example. So be an example, Krishna says. Don't stop others, don't stop yourself, but be a good example. Teach others how you can make spiritual advancement while being engaged in your respective duties. Hare Krishna. My last question actually is to you, uh, Kajal. You've had a baby. He's four months old. Congratulations. How will you set him off on his path to spirituality? What do you feel will be the first thing you will do to introduce him to the divine. 
Thank you so much. Uh, I already did actually. The minute he was born, I uh, whispered the Maha Mantra in his ears. That's the first sound he heard as soon as he came out into this world. And uh, he hears me chanting. He hears me. He watches me. He's with me 24 7. Um, the Maha Mantra is, is on loop in my house, playing all the time. So the sound is constantly going in his ears. And like Prabhuji says, this is the positive vibrations that every child should be exposed to. So uh, hopefully from now on it's going to be his journey and I hope he um, takes it further and has the best spiritual journey ahead. That's beautiful. All the best for that. Prabhuji, Thank my you. last question is, is there a fourth book that we should know about? Hey, to. We'll start prepping from now only. The fourth book. And there is one coming up in uh, December, first week, I think. That's for the children. There are around 40 stories from the scriptures because we need to give those uh, impressions to the children right from the beginning. So, some stories from the scriptures which are missing in today's uh, families. Because at one, one point of time, these stories were. Uh, discussed in every household, children would grow up hearing these stories from their mothers, grandmothers. <coughs> and then uh, for the adults, yes, there is one more coming out next year. That will be around June, July, which is uh, based on self-help topics. So I'm trying to put like 15, 20 major issues that everyone deals with today relationships, mind, expectations, addiction, and uh, a lot of other stuff. Forgiveness, envy, dealing with toxic people, mind, so all these major issues, karma. So though that book will have around 15, 20 such topics. So my, because I truly believe that Instead of people having to go and pick up a different book for a different topic, you just put everything in one. It's easier and that was also one of the inspirations behind this book. Each topic discussed in this book, each question could have a separate book of its own. So, but we don't have that much energy, we don't have that much time. So why not put everything in one book? And that's what I did with the second book also, Icons of Grace. Now, all of those saints have like big, big books on their lives. So I put everything together. So you'll know at least something about that. And then if you want to go, go in detail, you can have other books. But nobody has that much time. So we all want a crash course in spirituality. <laughs> Before you even begin, people want to know when will it end. Especially when they come to a satsang or events like no, so, or if you start the Gita discourse, the first question is always how much time it will take? How many sessions? When will it end? But uh, once they get connected, then they want the party to just go on. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, I think all of us wish that this party never ends and we all get many, many more occasions to come here to celebrate. Um, all the incredible work you do in the name of Lord Krishna. Now I'm going to open up this um, conversation in case anybody has questions from the audience. I think in the interest of time, we'll take about three or four questions. So if anybody has yes to the gentleman that I... So these two will answer your questions. They have read half of the book. <laughs> I'm always perplexed by this question on karma. I am born, currently wherever I am born, the karma is defined by where I am born, conditioning which has happened in my house, right? If I go to the previous births, the conditioning has happened with the father and mother where I was born. So how I am responsible for the karmas of today? The first birth which I had, the conditioning was happened through my parents, right? So how, how does that karma define me? You know what I mean? Prabhuji definitely knows what you mean. <laughs> no, so we can't just uh, put the blame on our parents. 
they define my destiny they define my karma every human being is born with a free will which is manifested in due course of the choices the decisions that we make so our parents can influence our consciousness to a certain extent if the parents had complete control then the parents would never have a complaint they would never need counselors for their children my child is not listening to me is doing something else i am telling something on a different path so parents can influence to a certain extent but it's our own choices that we make using our free will that bring us to a certain point and i think it is a major extent to build your teens and teens man you are influenced by where you stay hmm. and the relationship you have with your relatives which you have or yeah especially the parents i think the all the environment which is there is already conditioning you to become something till certain age right hmm. and then you have a free will which is already you know, subconsciously you are already have uh, your preconceived notions about everything mm. so how does karma is my responsibility no but even if till teenage you think you have uh, been conditioned by something still after that you have a choice because till 12 years the scriptures also explain the innocence of the child stays with him and when he's turning 12 that's when all the uh, impressions from the past they start manifesting You, yes, the parents have some control, but not complete control. And as humans, it's not about the first twelve years. It's about every moment. Every moment, the human life is so special. Okay, whatever wrong has been done to you, but then still you have a choice how to respond to it. What happens to us is our destiny. How we respond to it is a choice. Therefore, it is said, pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. So you still have a choice. even if you have been conditioned in a certain way like a person who is a chain smoker he still has a choice to give it up it may be a gradual process so we can't live based our entire life based on first 12 years so we still have a choice but after a certain age right till 12 years anyways you uh, you are not held responsible for anything that you do according to scriptures there's no karma till a child turns 13 So you are held, not held responsible for whatever you do. After that, what happens? That's that's something you need. Yes, parents do play a role, but then it's not everything because you are also carrying some destiny, and uh, that that is shaped by your choices that you make make you eventually. And on that is based on many circumstances: the society, the educational system, the family, the association that you keep. what you eat every time you are eating also you are making the choice you are inviting to your happiness or distress into your life so if you study the gita in detail you will understand how everything is just every time we are speaking something we are making a choice and we are sowing a seed for happiness or distress thank you any more questions yes yes why do we need to Why have you changed so much? I I took some time to recognize her. Can you just repeat your question? Why do we have to go to a temple to pray if God is everywhere? Uh, you have to read question number. Okay, I'll still answer. This is uh, Naira, our old friend. Not old in terms of age. <laughs> Why do we go to a temple if God is everywhere? Yes, God is everywhere. Just like I have answered this, water is a combination of hydrogen and oxygen (H2). At least that is what we have read. We never try. Now, hydrogen and oxygen is everywhere. So when we feel thirsty, why don't we just open our mouth and? Because we need accessible form of water. Similarly, God is everywhere, but can we perceive Him? We need some accessible form, and uh, that we find He is manifesting in a temple, in His deity form, and that becomes easier for us to relate. You can't be meditating on nothing. You can't. We, you may just we may just fool ourselves, but eventually, we can't be sitting. If you want to. Have that fulfillment. That's not possible unless you develop a relationship, and that's only possible with the person when you are seeing the person. So God is all spiritual, 
we can't see him with these eyes everywhere. So till then, we see him in a form in which he is manifested, which is made of matter, marble or metal. But even though these are made of matter, they are not material forms like ours. So they are spiritual and the proof is that anything which is material is exciting in the beginning, gets boring with time. Anything which is spiritual it might be boring in the beginning, but if you continue, it becomes very relishable. So if you get the, as I always give the example, if you get the uh, idol of a, or your favorite, say, film star, to your house. First day you may just install him like you install Ganpati, you may do Aarti, but you won't get up, maybe first morning you will get up and let's go and see him. But you won't get up at 4 o'clock. And after 10 days, maybe you just put a room in a corner, mein rakdo, then it becomes a showpiece. Because that excitement goes away. But it is the same form of Krishna you see, day after day, after day year after year after year. You don't feel bored. Every day people are rushing to see it. Because it is spiritual. Spiritual things become newer and newer with time. Or you read the Bhagavad Gita. It was written 5,000 years ago. You can read it thousand times and not feel bored at all. You read any mundane book once, twice, after that, after that loses that rasa, that juice. So spiritual means gets fresh with time and material means. So the form of the Lord is spiritual that is manifested in the temple. And therefore, it's easy to relate to him. Uh, when do you feel more emotion towards someone? When he's in front of you or when he's away? When he's away, you might just remember, but when he's in front of you, there's more intimacy. There's more bhav. So the Lord manifests that form in a temple where he's worshipped with love, devotion. And wherever he's worshipped with love, he makes himself accessible to us. And since the Lord is most accessible in the temple, so we go there. But if you find a place where he's not worshipped with love, there's no fear, no attention, and the mood is not proper, then you may not need you may not go to that temple. But if there is a temple where he's worshipped with a lot of care, attention, love, that's the place he manifests his beauty, his kindness, and we should go and bathe in that kindness. You understood or you just uh, repeated what your mother wanted you to say? <laughs> okay. I think if nobody has any more questions, is there one more question? The, sorry? Media has questions? If media would like to ask any questions. Yeah. Yes. So they can check once. Just, yes, give me five minutes. Just after two minutes, you're going to come by and do your bites. Yeah. So, on behalf of um, Neha, thank you for organizing this and for having me be a part of this. It was too special. And uh, thank you, Kajal, for you know, being such a great role model. It's not every day that you come across somebody with this level of depth. And Prabhuji, there's nothing left. We can't thank you enough for what you do for each and every one of us in your own unique way. You have come to symbolize what connection and religion means to each and every one of us in a unique way. So, thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, I also want to thank Priya uh, Ji and Kanchi. If you all remember, she was there for my previous book launch as well. And uh, so, I'm very grateful that when I mentioned to her, she was more excited than me to be here. And she has been a very, very special, kind soul, devotee. And uh, right from the day we spoke, so she called up and I said, uh, I didn't know who she was because I, her mother gave, gave her my number and uh, she said, uh, I have a question. I said, we can speak. Said, can I call? I said, yes. So then she started speaking. I said, uh, What do you do? She said, I'm into acting. I said, Bob, Chari Pasi Kay She is stuck. <laughs> but uh, when we spoke, we met. 
she is totally like a lotus leaf a lotus leaf is surrounded by water but untouched water so very very pure soul and very sincere and so is of course her sister she is not around she is next to me today nisha she was also into acting but after she got married just to take care of her child now she stays far so she gets the benefit of doubt and kajal ji's parents are here and both of them now sincerely doing it and thank you very much kajal ji so i'll give you the next day and thank you priya ji last time she couldn't be here last time she was to she was in dubai <laughs> so he pulled her back this time and she's also been a very very when we started the gita classes she was like a clean slate so when a person is like a clean slate it's easy she said she does she does she knows nothing and uh, we started and gradually and now i can see her growing in her spiritual life making so much advancement and uh, the simplicity of her heart has made uh, the process very accessible to her this process is meant for simple people who are simple at heart and therefore both of them have found by krishna's grace easy to take it up and i pray to krishna and radharani that they shower their choices blessings for both of them and i wish them a speedy spiritual advancement and a speedy advancement to all of you also we have been a part of this one for journey and uh, so i had a difficult task who to invite because i was told space is limited so we couldn't put it out openly it's not on my social media or on my whatsapp groups so what you see is a very close knit family and i'm very grateful to all of you there is a term in africa ubuntu which means i am because we are and that's what i feel whatever i am able to do to serve all of you it is your enthusiasm excitement that empowers me and, and uh, gives me that encouragement the path of bhakti is such that the people sitting on that side could be more advanced than the person sitting on this side and that i truly believe seeing your sincerity i feel inspired uh, hope i can continue to serve you and now the i want to introduce you to the women of the match Neha, please come forward. It was she. Uh, we just met, and she said, "So, what are you doing about it?" I said, "Look, there is a plan. Here, we'll do. No, no, let's do a book launch." And she basically has handled everything from scratch. She and her team, Deepa is here, <laughs> and a whole team. I don't know their names, but we can introduce them. So they took care of everything, right from scratch, coordinating with crossword, organizing. I didn't have to bother, and I have known her family for maybe last seven, eight years, more since the time I was born. <laughs> <laughs> since the time they were born. Yeah, since the time Abhyan and uh, Naira. I think Naira was Abhyan's age at that time, and I'm so so grateful to her that on her own she came forward and she said she would organize, she would take care of everything. So very very great. Please uh, do pick up your copies. Crossword will be happy. <laughs> Hare Krishna. They have been very, very cooperative. Harshil, their uh, marketing manager, and uh, some shooting. So I'll be happy to sign it. Thank you. Still sign. Still. Arjo. We can see you uh, uh, launch a book launch, especially for this Prabhuji. And uh, ask ask the monk. Uh, it's a good title. What do you want to say about the book? Hare Krishna, everyone. It's a complete honor to be here. I have been following Prabhuji since uh, quite a few years now, and Ask the Monk is a very special book. 
um, it's beautifully written and Prabhuji has answered all the basic questions that we usually have. Um, I suggest that everyone should keep this as their handbook, keep it by your bedside and definitely do give it a read. And what is the one question that uh, you want to ask Prabhuji on a regular basis uh, about uh, your industry? Uh, so many people have so many questions from our industry. Uh, any, any particular question that you would ask Prabhuji? Well, I've already asked him all those questions, but uh, primarily Prabhuji has answered most of them in our in this book of his. Um, like, for example, the purpose of life, uh, what is the meaning of quite a few things. He's answered a lot of basic questions in this book. And uh, I guess the rest is for each person to discover. I can't be a representative of our industry and ask on their behalf. But um, I guess each person should just connect and uh, reach out to Prabhuji uh, individually. Uh, Prabhuji Hare Krishna, what do you want to say to the book? For your second time, you have come to support your ma'am. How happy is it when the ma'am comes? Last time uh, she was pregnant and now uh, she is uh, blessed with a baby boy, I guess. Right? Yeah. How happy is it Prabhuji? It is always a pleasure because uh, it's not something uh, exciting for me because she is a family. Yes, yes. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So we, <laughs> Excitement is not the right word I would use, but I am very grateful. Uh, I and, am the one uh, who is grateful, Prabhuji. Uh, she's always there and uh, I know her whole family now. Yeah. So, whenever I launch a book, I was very clear from the beginning that whenever I launch a book, I wanted somebody very close to my heart to be launching this. Plus, that person should be a devotee. And Krishna made such wonderful arrangement that she sent her into my life. And I'm so grateful. Yes. And even if I say this sentence, I'm so grateful. A million times it wouldn't be enough. Oh yeah. God, no, Prabhuji. So, <laughs> yes, I am excited always when she's around, and she's she's an exciting person. <laughs> but uh, more than that, I see her as a very very special pure soul. Yeah. As I mentioned during my message also, and therefore. I always feel very comfortable in her association and I hope she feels the same. Of Prabhuji. <laughs> I think Prabhuji is too kind. He is extremely gracious and I am the one who is grateful for giving for Prabhuji or to Prabhuji for giving me this honor, for inviting me again and again for such beautiful, precious books. But uh, Prabhuji is just too kind and he loves to promote his kind. followers. <laughs> and the last time also I asked you this question, what will be the first thing that you will do? Uh, See, I went and did it. Yeah, I told you. You, you told me that. Yeah. Uh, what you are planning for his future? What about your future? There are so many things that coming up uh, when you will make uh, come back for the movies. Uh, will it be the South movies, Indian movies? Because nowadays the South movies are doing really well in it. Indian cinema, how do you see uh, this thing? So well, I'll quickly answer this because this interview is not about me, it's about yes, yes, Ask yes. the Monk, this book, guys, that we need to focus on. But uh, well, um, I am starting uh, my movie shoots from uh, mid-September onwards and I'm starting with Indian 2, which was a film that had stalled in the middle for a little while. And uh, when it comes to my son, thank you so much for your wishes. Of course, I'm going to introduce him to Prabhuji. And uh, Prabhuji said that we need to uh, introduce him to Gita classes from a very early age on. So th I'm going to do that. I'm absolutely going to do that. And how many things I want to ask you about this? Yes. When Gita is a subject for our children, because there are many subjects, like algebra, geometry, but in Bhagavad Gita, do you think that it's a higher school class? Absolutely. Higher school is not. It should be a young age. Because this teaches you the way of life, which no other subject really teaches us. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much.